here is another example or style of hair that I'm going to show you here. Now, when you're painting this, you should paint a little on the head. You shouldn't go much higher than the top of the head, though, or your hair is going to be really poofy. Unless your hair is like that, which some of us might have hair that is a little higher or taller. Now, if you're doing boy's hair, I'm going to show you how to do that. You're just going to do it along the sides of the head there a little. If you want to straighten or fix that, you may. If you want to give yourself bangs, you can have this hair going in a different direction, obviously going up and down rather than across. Now, boys, your hair would come here, and then it would end right about here. And then if it's not covering your ears, you'd have to have some ears on there. Now, I'm going to show you how to do a hairstyle up. So I'm going to finish doing her hair along the side of her head. Okay, so there is a woman with her hair in a bun, and it shows you how to do male hair as well. Once you are done with this, take your whole painting over to the drying rack, and next class, or if we have time, we will move on to doing the back. So now we need to do a design of some sort in the background. Don't draw on yourself, obviously. And don't draw down here at the very bottom because that's where we're going to put a shirt on eventually. So I'm just going to figure out my design and draw it all over this paper. Make sure it's a nice design that you're using lines and shapes. And also when you're creating this, think about how it's going to look. Don't just do the whole paper colored in the background. That's not very creative, is it? Think of what will go well with your self-portrait that you drew. And I'm just going to fill in this whole page. Oop, I got my hair there a little. Oh, well. guess it's got to stay there because you can't erase an oil pastel. And I'm just going to do my whole pattern here that I'm doing all the way through. Okay, you want to do a little neater job than what I did. I rushed through it, honestly, and I could have taken my time a little bit more. So once you have your background done, what you're going to do next is you are going to create your shirt for your person. So there is different paper that you can choose from. And what I did is I chose this stripe paper here. I'm going to flip it over to the background. And then I'm going to trace my half circle on here. If you're using a big sheet of paper, please do it at the edges so that other people can use the paper because you don't want to be hogging all that paper. That's not very nice. So I'm going to cut this out now. And now there are different style shirts that you can create. Let me show you. So there's my shirt. One shirt that you can create is you can create a little folded up shirt like this which looks very cute on her so how you do that is you have your half circle you do a little cut at the top of it and then you fold in the edges not all the way in just a little so it makes a triangle a curved triangle with the paper and that's how you make a shirt like that now I might want to cut that shirt a little smaller if that's the one I want to put on there or you could do a little v-neck shirt so i could cut a little v-neck in here that shirt's a little crooked so i might want to fix it or you could do a little shirt that goes across like this okay once you have your shirt whatever it may be however you want it You are going to need to make sure that it fits on the paper right. So I don't want her shirt all the way up here, or maybe I do. If you want it a little lower, trim that off of the edge of the paper. I'm going to glue this shirt on the paper because I really like how that one looks. So I'm going to flip it over, put the glue on the back side, and then press it on my paper. Next step is to make yourself royal. So we're going to do a crown on you. So you have, will have, some copper, some gold, 
and some silver paper to choose from to make a crown from. I'm taking some copper paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my crown, my paper over, not my crown over, my paper over, and trace around the edges of my crown. The reason I'm doing this on the back side is because I don't want my tracing lines to show up on the front of my crown. If I'm royal, those lines would not be showing up on my crown. And then you're going to cut it out. Now I have a whole box full of shiny colored paper for you to use to create some jewels on your crown. Now, male and females will have crowns, so you can be a queen, a king, a prince, or a princess. It is up to you. So there is my crown. I'm going to push my scraps off to the side that I will clean up later. And here is the box full of all this pretty colored paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do one main gem. You can do more than one, but that's just all I want to do. You can draw on the back side if you want, or you can just start cutting like I am, but please don't waste my paper. If you have small bits like this, garbage they shall go. If they're bigger bits, please don't throw them away so that they can be reused. There we go. So I'm going to glue that on here, and then I'm going to glue it on the self-portrait. So there is my royal self-portrait. If you want to, you can add necklace or earrings or whatever you like to your picture. Don't go too crazy, though. And if you have big scraps like this left from your crown, please put them back in the bin. If it's a piece like this, what I want you to do is to cut out the edges that you already cut off so it doesn't get stuck on another piece. And then this can be saved. That can go in the garbage. Fill out your reflection sheet. Turn it in. Have fun, boys and girls.